A lot of people were talking about the history that could be made by one Patricio Pitbull. Sergio Pettis had other plans in mind. He retained his Bellator bantamweight title and looked great in doing so. He's kind enough to join us right now via the Magic of Zoom. There he is. Sergio Pettis is here. Hello, Sergio. Congratulations on the win. Thanks for doing this. Hey, thank you for having me on, Ariel. It's a pleasure. Uh, so it's uh, it's great to talk to you, and you're still the champ. And I'm just wondering, like, I feel like all the uh, all the talk going into last Friday in Chicago was about history. And, you know, you were a part of the story as well, but, you know, the big selling point was Patricio making history. Did you get annoyed by any of that? Did you feel like, man, here I am coming back from ACL. I'm the champ a year and a half away. Can I get some love here? Uh, man, honestly, I really, I wasn't paying attention to any of that. I was just more focused on the fight itself. Um, yeah, they were promoting Pat- Patricio a lot that fight, but you know, it just made me uh, have a chip on my shoulder and go out there and put on a hell of a performance, which I, I did get to do. Can, can we go back to when you injured yourself? And in, um, you know, you, we last saw you in late 2021. I felt like you, everything was coming together for you. Incredible wins. You're the champ, and then you get injured. How difficult was that when you came to the realization that you were going to have to be out for quite some time? How did you deal with that? Man, I was uh, definitely depressed. You know, it was about three and a half weeks before I was going to fight Rafion. I tore my ACL. And um, man, I missed out on a chance to make a million dollars, missed out on a chance to uh, have three fights last year. So I was just stuck on the sidelines, recovering and getting healthy. Definitely uh, different uh, different times for me. I'm so used to moving and training. I had to sit back, relax, and just uh, watch other people become successful. It was definitely a humbling moment. So how did you get out of the depression? Um, you know, it took a while actually for about the first two months, you know, I couldn't do much. I was just sitting around chilling out. Uh, thank, thankfully I got a great fiance that, you know, can keep me in a good mood and just chilling with my dogs and, uh, you know, just living a normal life. It was a a time off for me. You know, I I didn't realize how banged up I was and how much I put on the side as far as like my family and friends. Um, I got to spend time with my family and spend time with my friends. So uh, at the end of it, you know, um, it was kind of refreshing. It rejuvenated me. But you did say on Friday that uh, I guess maybe the one tiny silver lining was there was a part of you that didn't really want to fight Stotts just because you you are friends and, and, and you know, one-time training partners. Uh, was that a bit of a relief that you didn't have to fight him? Um, you know, it, it was a relief. I hate to say that just because, you know, I wanted Stotts to win that million dollars. He deserves it. He's a great guy and a great athlete. And uh, that's life-changing money for anybody. But, uh, you know, I think the the universe just showed both of us, you know, we were meant to fight each other. I tear my ACL and then, you know, that happens with uh, him versus Patchy. So it just really, truly wasn't meant to be. What is it like for someone who is so fit in the prime of their life, you're training multiple hours a day, and then all of a sudden you can't move. You can't even get off the couch without help. You can't do anything. You can't probably even break a sweat for the first couple of months. H- how is that mentally and physically for you? Man, it's, it's tough. Anybody who's gone through an ACL injury or an injury that takes time off from what you love to do, uh, you know, you learn a lot about yourself. I learned uh, how, how much I got to work on as a person uh, without, having, without having my sport. You know, my sport keeps me calm and keeps me uh, motivated and hungry. And without any of that, man, I was just kind of lost for a bit. You know, I was like, damn, who am I? Kind of kind of feel like, you know, what, what do I, what, what can I bring to the table? Who am I? And, uh, you know, I just kind of, it, it was, it was really needed. Honestly, I kind of put that chip on my shoulder and maybe, uh, you know, get to this, this, uh, mentality where I'm at now, where I'm at peace, but uh, I'm ready for war. Was there any talk of stripping you of the belt? Um, there wasn't actually, I think if they would have stripped me of the belt, I definitely would have been way more depressed. So, mm-hmm. uh, I'm th- I'm thankful that they did not do that. Um, you know, they they made some plans around uh, having an interim champion and the the Grand Prix champ. So uh, things really played out. Uh, was it was it hard for you to watch MMA while you were going through that? No, I started watching MMA more. It was kind of crazy. Wow. I actually could uh, yeah, I could sit back and be a fan of the sport. You know, I, I didn't really have no one to worry about, no weight cuts to worry about. So um, it made me want to watch it more, man. I actually was even going to the gym while I was injured to go coach my teammates and hold pads for my teammates and. You know, I didn't want I didn't want to leave the sport too much. I knew I had to come back eventually, so uh, I stayed around. You doing those crazy bets like your brother too? <laughs> no, not at all, man. He's, what's up with this he's guy? He's risky. Man. This guy's crazy. Uh, he's a, crazy. <laughs> you know what? The crazy thing is, Anthony. That he's been that way since he was young. Before he had money, before he had any fame, Anthony is literally the same person to this day. But now he's got both money and fame with him. So it's just kind of you know the, the world gets to see it now. We're, we're showing the slip. Um, we just showed it of, of the, the bet he put on you. Uh, that's an insane <laughs> amount of money. I think, what was it, like 72K he stood to win from a 50K bet, something like that? Yeah, 50K. Yeah, yeah. Does he tell you this beforehand or do you only find out after? 
I find out on Instagram. I saw it on Instagram oh, before I fought. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, I saw it on Instagram. I'm like, oh my God, he put 50,000 on me. I got to make sure I win this fight now so we can both win. Um, no, nah, but you know, I, I didn't really pay attention to that. You know, Anthony's, you know, he, he is who he is. He's risky with his money and, uh, He's ballsy, man. Risk it to get the biscuit, and he definitely got the biscuit. I I feel like it could go both ways. Like it could go the like one direction is like shit, man. This adds more pressure to my shoulders because I don't, I don't want to lose for him. But also, that's awesome support to get from your brother, and that he's putting it out there, right? Yeah, for sure. Anthony's be, uh, believed in me before I believed in myself. You know, throughout my whole career. So uh, even yeah, to put fifty thousand down on me, he's uh, shows his belief in me. You know, he he's just telling me like, bro, you can win this fight. I know you can do it, and. Uh, yeah, that fifty thousand dollar bet definitely shows he believes that. <laughs> when were you a hundred percent? Like, w- w- were you able to come back earlier, or was this was this perfectly like in tune with when you were planning on coming back? Because sometimes we hear people like, "Oh, I could have fought uh, two months ago, but they just didn't have a date for me." You know what? I think it played out perfectly. Um, I fought, I think, like a year. Uh, was it fourteen months after I got surgery? So it definitely played out good. Um, the recovery was actually fairly quick for me, man. I, I was moving pretty probably three months after I started, you know, swimming, started lifting, you know, started kind of going back to the gym, hitting bags. And, uh, honestly, yeah, it, it did take some time, but like looking back at it, it went by pretty fast. Okay. And, um, was it your idea? Like, wh- how did you find out about the Patricio element? Did they come to you with this? Did you talk to them about it? Like, how did that all play out? Um, actually it was my coach Duke. Duke was telling me, Hey, I hear Patricio's thinking about coming down to 135 to try to get that belt. And, um, things just kind of added up for me, man. You know, we, 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 uh, he made a post on Instagram was like, Hey, um, Patricio, if you guys are down for this, you know, we're down for it as well. And, uh, yeah, I think it was mostly from my Instagram post to be honest. And what did you think initially about it? Um, I was scared at first. Cause I'm like, damn, Patricio's coming down to 135. I'm like, this is a big move. But, uh, you know, I was like, at a point in my career, I was, you know, I'm ready to take this risk and show everybody what I'm capable of doing. And it gave me that chip on my shoulder that I needed to go out there and, um, you know, just believe in myself, believe in my camp. And man, yeah, last Friday, it all came together for me. This is one of the many things that I really respect about you is that you're not afraid to just tell it like it really is. Like you saying there, I was scared. And even on Friday at the post fight press conference, correct me if I'm wrong, were you not feeling like, oh shit, I I think I might lose this fight? Like you were you were sort of doubting yourself just because of how good he was. For sure, I I was having talks with my fiance and I uh, kept telling her like, you know, if I, if I lose anybody, it's okay to lose the Patricio Pitbull type of guy, you know, a legend like this. And uh, yeah, if you guys could have saw me before the fight, man, I was stressed out. I was sweating for no reason, pacing back and forth throughout the whole week. Um, sleep was thrown off. Um, yeah, it was a very stressful week that week prepping for Pitbull. Have you ever felt that way before a fight before? You know what? I have, but not to this level. And uh, after being off for 18 months, it definitely made it a little bit more tense than how it was before. You know, I was used to competing every like four to six months. And yeah, having that time off, it was like, damn, do I still got it? You know, and then people were talking about ring rust and all this. And I'm like, man, hopefully I don't got that, uh, you know, that factor playing into the the fight. But once I stepped in there, man, I felt like, you know, that's that's where I needed to be that day. And it just it just felt right. Before you stepped in there, like in the locker room, you say that uh, on fight week in the hotel, you were pacing and sweating. What was it like in the locker room as you're warming up? Were you even more nervous? Oh, for sure. Super nervous, man. It's uh, it's a stressful for anybody who fights. I think we all feel that way. I mean, there's everybody deals with it differently. Some people are more confident than others. But, uh, you know, yeah, I was I was definitely like having some crazy images in my head, uh, fighting some some self demons, man, where I was like, I, I saw myself getting knocked out. I saw myself getting finished uh, right before I went out. I'm just like shaking my head, like, all right, get that out of your head, get that out of your head, focus up. And uh, yeah, man, it was it was definitely a, a crazy, crazy experience. Do you think that was more because of who you were fighting or because of the layoff? I think a mixture of both, man. You know, if you watch Patricio's career, he's got a lot of finishes, knocking people out. He's, uh, I mean, he's knocked out some good guys. He's subbed some good guys, and you know, he's got the full skill set. So. Um, yeah, man, I think it was a mixture of both, you know? So when you're in the uh, cage, like when you come through and you're in the cage and they're announcing you and they're doing the whole intros, are you thinking of these things still at that point? You know what? Once I got in there, you know, like I said, I feel like this is where I should be. And, uh, I mean, th- there was little glimpses of that, you know, where I was like, all right, get that out of your head. But you know what? Honestly, I, all I kept thinking about that fight is the, the post speech, you know, I was like, I really want to deliver this message to everybody. And, uh, Throughout the rounds, man, I was getting closer and closer to doing that. I kept thinking about that, like you're getting closer to really sh- uh, thinking or saying what you uh, thought to say. So, yeah, man, it, um, 
yeah, it's, you know, it's crazy. Crazy fighting is a crazy experience in general. Yeah. Uh, up there with Izzy's post fight speech in April, yours on Friday, like just it, it's, uh, it's, I'm always so impressed with how you guys are able to verbalize this stuff after a 25 minute fight or a fight of that magnitude. Why was it so important for you to say what you said after the fight? Uh, I just felt like it was my, my why, like my reason to win that fight, you know, just to get my message delivered and, uh, you know, just talk about the stuff that I've been going through this past couple of years and throughout my whole life of dealing with, you know, social anxiety, anxiety itself. And, uh, even depression, you know, last year I had a lot of depression that I didn't re realize that I could even have. And, uh, I just felt like, you know, I want to deliver that message and share it to everybody else that's going through the same things and that, um, that it's okay to feel these feels and have these thoughts and that, uh, you just got to keep pushing forward and keep trusting yourself and believing in your timing. And, you know, I've had a, sorry, my dog's going crazy, but I uh, yeah, believe in, you know, believe in yourself and, um, you know, just, you know, trust your timing really. Uh, have you talked to anyone about this stuff? No, you know what? Never, never have I really have, you know, I, I was growing up, I always had crazy anxiety, you know, um, I, I thought I was just soft back in the days when I was younger. I'm like, maybe, you know, I'm just soft, you know, I'm not, you know, a tough guy like that. And, uh, after a while, I just started like realize like, Oh, I actually have, you know, some mental health issues. I got some anxiety. I got some stuff going on that I got to get, I got to check out myself and I've never really saw anybody, but, uh, you know, I read a lot of books and kind of just throughout the sport, you learn so much about yourself, um, that I was able to kind of pinpoint stuff that, you know, causes my anxiety to happen more, but also how to, um, kind of deflect it a little bit as well. Are you interested in talking to someone about it or do you feel like you have it under control? I mean, as of right now, I feel like I'm good. You know, um, I feel like I'm the type, the type of guy that has to go through it myself, you know, the trial and error of, uh, you know, just the, the self journey. So, um, uh, maybe, maybe one day I feel like I will need to, but, um, as of right now, I know I feel, feel like it all played out for a reason. It's almost like a superpower, man. You know, I'm kind of so self-aware that when I get in that, that cage, I'm, I'm really aware and I'm really on my A game and I, I kind of credit it to my anxiety. Uh, some fighters, especially recently, have talked about uh, speaking to a sports psychologist, um, and that's like a big thing these days, especially in fighting. Have Have you ever considered that? Um, you know what? A Anthony's actually talking about that. Yes, you know, maybe of course. Talk Anthony, yeah, I yeah, talked yeah, to him Anthony. about it. I was trying to remember. Anthony actually like speaks about it glowingly, like it really changed him. Yeah. How come, uh, For sure. how come you've never talked to his guy? You know, I probably should. I don't know. I, I just haven't really, I, I haven't put too much time into it. I was just like, you know, going through it myself and, uh, just kind of figure it out myself, but you know, maybe, maybe this time I go and talk to somebody and, uh, kind of put, put some of this to rest. Maybe that will like unlock a different Sergio, like an even better Sergio Pettis. Like maybe you're holding yourself back by not getting this out there. Do you even, do you, do you talk to like your fiance or anyone about any of this? Yeah. yeah my fiance, actually, she's my therapist. Okay. Honestly, I talked to her a lot about this and, uh, yeah, she gets me uh, through a lot of stuff, and she's just, you know, such a great lady that it, it kind of definitely helps out with my career and me as a person in general. And just curious, obviously, you know, what your family has been through has been well documented. Do you think, you know, what happened to your father has anything to do with any of this? For sure, I think so, man. You know, obviously losing a parent at a young age, you uh, you grow up fairly quick, and you learn uh, a lot about, you know, just stuff that you wouldn't learn at that age. And uh yeah, definitely. I think it's got some uh, kind of like PTSD from that as well, you know. Mm. Um, at what point in the fight did you start to believe, like, I got this guy, that, you know, I am better than him and that I'm going to win this fight? Um, honestly, it was about the second round. Once I, I started landing my jab at will, you know, and that's when I started realizing, like, yo, I could really touch this guy up. You know, I was just landing my punches and my combos were coming together. And, um, yeah, man. I think the round, the second, the second round is where I started really feeling myself and was like, you know, it's time to open up. Uh, I've held back so much throughout my career that I can't hold back in this fight. Do you think he, he lost a step fighting at 135? And do you think it was a mistake for him to go down? I mean, going down a uh, weight class is always tough for anybody. I used to fight at 25 and the way I felt at 125 is different than how I felt at 135. So um, definitely, man. But, you know, if you take that risk and you're willing to do that, that's on you, you know, so he went out there willing to risk all that. And he came down to my world and realized, you know, that he, he, he's not there. We've seen some wacky judges decisions recently when they announced officially that you had won after everything that you've been through. Can you verbalize how that felt? Uh, I felt like a relief off my shoulders, man. You know, yeah. I didn't realize the magnitude of how big this fight was after winning that, you know, I was just like, Oh, I just beat Patricio. I was just like, Oh, I, and I beat another guy. But then I see uh, the media and everything. I'm like, oh, I actually beat somebody, you know, really good. You know, Patricio is really good. But I had to go in there kind of like kind of trying to mellow it, out, mellow it out a little bit. And 
it's still, you know, settling in. I haven't really slept these last couple of days. I've been so amped and so hyped, waking up motivated. I already know who my next opponent is. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm ready to really focus up this year and go all in. You know, I had a year off and um, I'm just ready to go all in. I'm about to be 30 years old this year. So I know my time is definitely ticking and I want to leave a big stamp on the sport. Uh, did you like that they brought Patchy in right after the fight? Yeah, I didn't mind that. I mean, it's, it's, it makes sense. You know, he's the next guy on the list and um, th- we got to promote something. So I was cool with it. I'm cool with Patchy, man. He's not a bad guy. We've trained with each other back in 2017. We always reach out to each other on Instagram and stuff. You know, he's very supportive to me. I'm supportive to him as well. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a great fight. He's a tough athlete. Any idea when and where that will happen, that fight? Um, as of now, I don't know any location, but I'm pushing for, um, November ish, October ish. Um, around that time frame seems good. I am a little banged up from this fight. Patricio got me with some good knees to the body. My ribs are a little sore and, uh, got my nose was a little beat up for a bit, but, um, other than that, yeah, I'm pretty healthy to go back to the gym. I'm probably going to start training again next week. Uh, the crowd was great there in Chicago. I feel like you fighting in the Midwest, perhaps Milwaukee. Is is any of this possible for you? I'd love that. It's been a while since I fought in Milwaukee, and I yeah. didn't have the great the greatest outcome last time I fought in Milwaukee. I fought Rob Font, so I just got jabbed up all night. But uh, yeah, I'd like to definitely fight in front of my home crowd, in front of my family. Uh, my family came out there. We had like three whole rolls filled with my family members and friends, and you know, just everybody that supports me over here in the Midwest, which is a, a big big support. Um, speaking of UFC bantamweights, I saw you training with, uh, Corey Sanhagen. What was that like? It was great, man. Corey is a great guy. He's, uh, he's very motivating. You know, he reminds me of myself. He's just a simple guy, he trains, goes home to his girl's fiance with his dogs and lives that, that cycle every day. And, uh, it was motivating, man. It was, it was great to get that work. And he's such a great athlete and so, um, well-spoken, you know, he, he was a, a great, great help for my last camp, you know? Was that your uh, idea to go there to train with him or someone else's? Um, actually, he was hitting me up to come out. Um, we've trained with each other back at Rufus Sport. He came down for a couple of days. And uh, yeah, he hit me up. You know, yeah, you want to come out and come train? And yeah, we, I went out there uh, to help with the Peter Yan camp. And then I went out there to help with the Cheeto camp as well. Oh, wow. Okay. So you guys help each other. Yeah, yeah we've been helping each other out, man. Yeah. Um, I wasn't gonna bring him out my last camp, but you know he's so big. I was like, I don't, I don't think I need that look for uh, Patricio. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I know he's got a good fight coming up against uh, Umar, Umar. So yeah. I hit him up. Yeah, yeah, I hit him up, and yeah, I'd like to go out there and give him some looks, man. He's he's a great guy. Uh, what do you make of these uh, Bellator PFL rumors? And uh, would you be excited about a potential merger between the two brands? Hey, man, I'm I'm, I'm down for whatever. You know, at this point in my career, I'm down for whatever. Um, uh, if there's a new belt at PFL, you know, PFL belt to get, that'd be awesome. Be the first two brothers that have two belts in different organizations. So I think it'd be uh, a great opportunity for sure. Do you think this would be good for the sport if two of the top promotions come together? Or is that one less option for you guys? If you, you know, like you, you, you are a byproduct of free agency, right? You bet on yourself, you went out there, you got a great deal. Is it ultimately good for the fighters if there's less options or is it good because you can now fight new guys and there's bigger opportunities? Um, I guess a, a mixture of both, you know, okay. yeah, definitely, you know, you, uh, athletes do lose an option to go to the PFL, but hey, I'm already in Bellator. So I really, I don't got to worry about that too much. <laughs> that is true. That is true. So, so you're fighting, you fight, uh, you fight patchy. You don't get ah, the million dollars. That really sucks. Cause you were a part of that. That is a bummer. They didn't make it up to you or anything like that. They can't put the million dollars on the line for this one. Nah, man, they can't, but, uh, it's, it's all good. Pat, Patchy deserved that million. He did so good last year. You know, he went through Horiguchi, he beat, uh, um, Stotts. He beat, um, other dude. I forgot his name. I totally forgot his name right now. I'm drawing a blank, but, um, yeah, man, he, he deserved that million. And I think, you know, for real, what the universe taught me was like, you know, money or legacy. And, uh, this last fight showed me that, um, you know, even though I missed out on the money that uh, I, I got the legacy and, uh, I think that's more important to me at the moment. Uh, Magomedov, right? That was a great win for him. Magomed, Magomed, Magomedov. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, Magomed, Magomedov. Uh, by the way, yeah. speaking of big time performances, how about you and Anthony throwing out the first pitch at a uh, Brewers game? Can you yeah, assess dude. your uh, your 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 performance for us? You know, there's been some dicey first pitches uh. by celebrities over the years. <laughs> You know what? I'm just happy that I made it to the glove, you know, to the base. But yeah, my technique wasn't the greatest. I didn't shoot it as hard. You know, I was fighting like seven days later. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to put myself at risk for anything. Anthony went out there and whipped it really hard. And uh, 
Yeah, man, it was a good time. First time throwing out the first pitch in front of my hometown, in front of Milwaukee. So uh, definitely a great experience. I give myself a, a five out of ten. <laughs> okay, that's humble of you. I, I, you know, you're not a baseball guy when you say shoot the ball uh, as opposed to exactly. throw the ball. Uh, <laughs> throw the ball. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> By the way, we saw Anthony against uh, Roy Jones. Are you interested in ever doing something like that, a, a boxing match when when your time with Bellator or MMA is done? Yeah, I'm definitely interested in boxing. I feel um, this last camp, I boxed so much and it showed in my fight. Um, I definitely like some opportunities to go boxing people up. It'd be a great time for me. And I think personally, uh, I, I was going through Anthony's training camp with him in boxing and it's less uh, banging up on your body as, uh, you know, wrestling and jujitsu and MMA. So definitely could see myself uh, doing that as well. And finally, I want to ask you about your boy C-Rod. What a big win for him in April. I know that you were in his corner, uh, Christian Rodriguez. He beat Raul Rojas. Uh, how far do you think he can go? And what was it like to see a guy that you guys have been kind of training with and helping to groom to this point for so many years? I know he started training at Rufus when he was very young. Uh, to see him like play the spoiler on a big stage like that against a guy that the UFC was trying to build up. Man, it was awesome. C-Rod's a great guy. Um, you know, he's been with us since he was pretty much my age, like 13, 14 at Rufus Sports. So wow. to see him grow and uh, become the athlete he's becoming, and he's, he's going to go so far. I'm excited. I'm going to make sure he goes far, man. I, I really like that guy. And uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, to be in his corner was cool, you know, to see him go out there and deal with that adversity and deal with all that pressure. There was a lot of pressure on him that week, and he went out there and played it out like a G, man. A, a much respect to C-Rod. You want to be a coach when you're done? I don't know. Coaching is stressful, man. Being in the corner, you know, it is stressful. I feel like I get more nervous for the guys who are fighting than I do for my own fight sometimes. And, uh, I mean, we'll see what happens. I do like sharing the information that I've learned throughout my years of training martial arts, but we'll, we'll see, I guess we'll see. Well, congratulations. Enjoy this win, man. And, uh, congrats on, on being comfortable saying what you said afterwards. Uh, that helps a lot of people and it makes you very relatable and someone that we want to root for, but it also, lets other people know that it's okay to feel this way and to talk about this stuff. So that to me is probably the most impressive thing that you did on, on Friday, uh, even though you beat one of the greatest fighters in the world right now. So uh, much love and respect to you, Sergio. Enjoy the victory and good luck in training for Patchy Mix. Thank you so much, Ariel. Always a pleasure to talk to you, brother. My Same man. here. There he is, Sergio Pettis, one of the very best uh, bantamweights on the planet.